Thanks. So, uh, you know, as I was sitting there listening, I was thinking, uh, when I was still at NASA, the whole commercial space thing was really in its infancy. And, um, you know, it started out with this uh, COTS program, this commercial cargo program. And um, it was kind of this little experimental thing uh, that, uh, that nobody knew what was going to come of it. And to think that we, we went from that not that long ago, I mean, we're talking less than five years, um, at least since I left NASA, and, and from that time to where we are now, which is right on the cusp of putting NASA astronauts onto vehicles developed under this program and, and sending people into space and restoring the capability to America to launch men and women from our soil, it's remarkable how fast that happened and, and how far we've come and how successful we've been along the way. And Kathy, you were there from the very beginning of all that and um, you know, through the cargo uh, program and now leading the crew program, uh, you had a, a, such a huge role in all of that and it wasn't easy. I, I, know, I, 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 I know that's not an understatement by any means. Um, and I just wanted to thank you for your dedication to getting us to where we are today, which is, again, remarkable uh, how far we've come. So uh, if I can have the next slide, I just want to talk to you a little bit about what we're doing with under the CCT cap uh, program. So we are developing our vehicle, the Crew Dragon vehicle, and it's uh, one-stop shopping. We, we do it all in-house. We have the, uh, the Dragon spacecraft. The rocket is our Falcon 9 rocket. The, all the ground launch uh, infrastructure, the launch pads, and all the operations, so crew operations, which is what I'm responsible for, uh, mission op operations, the guys in mission control, and all the production, the recovery, um, all that from start to finish uh, is, is all our responsibility, and we're very excited about that. Our vehicle can carry up to seven people. We're focusing on the NASA requirement, which is to carry four people. That gives us extra capability to carry uh, cargo and excess of requirements and uh, additional powered cargo as well as uh, unpowered cargo. Uh, we have uh, a state-of-the-art integrated abort system. So uh, if, if you saw Josh's video earlier today, you probably saw a little clip of the pad abort test that we did. I'll talk a little bit more about that, but uh, that was super exciting to watch uh, Dragon fly for the first time under her own power. And, uh, and, and she got out of there in a hurry. She, uh, had a zero to 60 time that makes the Tesla P85D uh, weep. <laughs> so that was pretty, pretty awesome. Um, we are- Did you say that? I, 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 yeah, <laughs> I think I, I'll, well, I'll find out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are launching from 39A, you see the picture right there. Uh, that's a very historic launch pad, as most of you know. That's where uh, a lot of NASA's Apollo launches took uh, place. Uh, Apollo 11 launched from that launch pad. More importantly, STS-123 and 132 launched from that launch pad. <laughs> um, and uh, so uh, it's now undergone a, a drastic renovation. We've been working really hard. That launch pad is going to be operational very soon. And uh, if you see the big hangar over here that we added uh, for the processing of the Falcon 9, and also it's also ready for Falcon Heavy, uh, we had to take up a bunch of the rocks from the crawler away where the crawler used to go up to the launch pad put in rail so that our transporter erector could go along. And of course we had to do a lot of the plumbing because we use RP-1 and, and liquid oxygen, so we had to redo a whole lot of the ground systems, uh, support equipment, and a lot of civil engineering around the launch mount. Tremendous amount of work uh, uh, done down there, and John Murator is like a kid in a candy shop uh, uh, having fun every day making that come together, and it's almost done. It's really, it's really super exciting. Uh, we also uh, are designing for propulsive landing both of the uh, first stage uh, using slightly less propellant than was shown in uh, a crude mm -hmm. video uh, <laughs> earlier. And um, it's uh, also design, we're also designing propulsive landing for Dragon. And we want that to be a core competency of our, of our company. Uh, and uh, we have a bunch of flights coming up. I can jump right ahead. Oh, I got the clicker here. Yeah, it does work. Yeah, nice. that's good. Um, just to look uh, really briefly at our milestones that we have coming up, we've completed uh, the first milestone was the certification baseline review. We did the pad abort test, which you saw in the video. The, we've activated our avionics test bed. Uh, basically, it's our iron bird with all the avionics boxes and harnesses laid out for the vehicle. Uh, coming up before the end of the year, we have a lot of work to do before the end of the year. We have a critical design review and that's uh, well underway. Products are being developed for that as I speak. Um, the qualification of our docking system is nearing completion down at the uh, Johnson Space Center using a six-stop test bed they have down there. Like I said, 39A is going to be ready for operational readiness very soon before the end of the year. 
and propulsion module testing. We're doing a full propulsion module test in Texas and propulsive land landing testing. We're gonna kick that off in Texas uh, in, in, in the near future. In 2016, uh, we then are gonna upgrade the 39A even further, adding in all the systems needed for crew launches. So the gantry arm, the slide wire escape baskets and all that other infrastructure. Uh, we're going to do an integrated test of the uh, life support systems. We're going to um, do a more propulsion module testing. We're gonna qualify our spacesuits, so we're ready. And then we're gonna do our demo one mission. So our first mission is sending a Dragon up and back to the ISS, including docking with nobody inside, fully autonomous. We're gonna demonstrate the end-to-end -end mission before we put anybody inside of it. And then uh, we have a few more milestones after that before we get to the in-flight abort test. We've already done the pad abort test. We're also gonna test it uh, right around max Q to make sure that it works in both of the most challenging uh, parts of that envelope. And then finally, the demo two flight to the ISS with crew members aboard is the capstone flight test. And uh, that is scheduled for uh, 2017. So it's gonna be an unbelievable couple of years. That's what we have in store. And I just wanna show, uh, and on one quick video, I might need your help back there to roll it. Uh, and this shows you kind of what it's going to be like is so you can get your concept of what it's going to be like flying in a dragon up to space. Hawthorne, this is Dragon. Falcon has placed us in orbit and trajectory looks good. Copy that. We see the same. Time to next Delta V is one hour. So obviously uh, the out the window shots were all CGI, but the shots you saw of the interior were, uh, were a video that was shot inside of our engineering prototype. Uh, so you got a little teaser there of what the interior looks like and, and also uh, what, this, what the crew touchscreen displays are gonna look like. And uh, finally that the uh, spacesuit itself is gonna look like, all of which we're developing in house. So uh, we're getting there and it's, it's gonna be, a, like she says, gonna be quite the ride. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. 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 Your turn. Hey, good. Thank you very much. Uh, hey, Kathy, outstanding leadership, right? Multiple programs, um, and you continue to excel, so thank you. Um, and Pat, you know, as always, best conference in America. Um, so thank you for everything you've done. Yeah, Provost, um, thank you very much for those kind words. Uh, New Mexico State has been very special for us, you know, theoretically, my son is going to graduate in engineering this, this semester. Uh, and uh, if, if he does, <laughs> we'll have sent uh, four generations through the engineering school. So, Dean, thank you. Uh, it's been an immeasurable impact uh, on our family. So, thank you. And, and lastly, Wayne, you know, Wayne, you know, you guys all know this is a small community, and I see Wayne a lot. Um, but after this morning, it's just gonna be a very difficult visual kind of picturing Lady Gaga every time I see you. <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna get by that. But anyway, let's go. Uh, hey, this is, this is really a transformational year for us. You know, as, as you evolve into the program, uh, this is the year where you end design and, and move into production, right? So really kind of a key milestone for us uh, as we finished up the design. Right now you can see below, we're, we're building up our structural test article out in Florida, we'll be uh, delivering to the test site a, a full up flight design structure for the crew module and the service module. Uh, the service module will be delivering out to the test site in, um, in March of this year. Uh, the crew module will be delivered in about May of this year and you can kind of see in the pictures below, we've, we've now integrated the tunnel under the lower dome with the longerons. Uh, pretty quickly we'll be joining the, the lower dome with the upper dome uh, and kicking off about a year campaign uh, in the structural test article where we test all of the different load scenarios, nominal and off nominal, in multiple configurations. Uh, we'll do modal testing and we'll do separation testing with the, uh, with the pyros, uh, with the service module, crew module, and then the launch vehicle adapter supplied by ULA. So really an exciting time uh, in the middle of production of, of true flight design hardware. Uh, so pretty exciting for us. 
Uh, we've also, of course, in flow, um, have the large pieces of the qualification test vehicle in production. So the upper dome, lower dome, tunnel will all be delivered in the G December, January, uh, over December and January uh, to support the buildup of the qual test vehicle, uh, which will get first power on in, in May of 2016 uh, and then get shipped out to the test site uh, where we'll go through the full range of, of avionic checkouts, um, thermal vac, EMI, EMC, acoustic, uh, vibration testing. So really uh, a really exciting 2016 as we evolve from from design complete into integrated qualification testing. Uh, so pretty important transition for us to do and to do well. Uh, we have outstanding partners uh, on our team you know, one of the key partners is, um, is United Launch Alliance. So one of the main uh, differences between a normal ULA launch and, and a crewed ULA launch is going to be the need to develop a, a crew access tower. And so ULA, uh, in partnership with us, has, uh, has designed, there's a, a seven-segment tower uh, that we've constructed off-site about a mile away from the launch facility. Uh, and, and we have it built into different segments so that we can transition those into uh, and onto the launch site uh, in between the normal cadence of, of launches that ULA has. And so as of now, we've got five of those seven segments uh, built up uh, right before they launched uh, their latest flight. And, and real kudos to ULA. Uh, and you heard this morning from Mark that uh, the 100th successful mission um, from United Launch Alliance, so 100% mission success, a real testament to the, uh, the integrity and process control that they have, uh, and, and really the primary reason why we selected United Launch Alliance for our, for our early flights. But, outstanding success from them. Uh, and then across the board, um, you know, we're, we're working in the old OPF-3, as you remember, the orbital processing hangar. Uh, we've got the, uh, the low bay, which used to be the main engine shop that we're building up the structural test article now. Uh, we'll finish completion of the retrofit of the high bay and also the PCC, the building next door. Um, the high bay is where we're long-term build up all of the crew modules. Uh, and so that is nearing complete. You can see the tower with the five sections uh, erected there. And then, you know, through the integrated qual campaign uh, and the validation of all of, our, of all of our hardware and con ops, we'll be performing additional wind tunnel tests, component qualifications. Some have already been completed. Uh, some are in work and others will, will be scheduled through, um, through 2016 and into early 2017. So looking forward, as I mentioned, you know, main focus right now, uh, our immediate focus right now is structural test article, qual test article build. Uh, as soon as the qual test vehicle gets to initial power on, we'll start building up the third crew module that we have. Uh, we'll be finishing up the crew access tower in 2016. I mentioned the integrated campaign of qualification and verification, so parachute drop testing is going to be key to that. Um, engine hot fire testing. And then moving into the seven, 2017, right? So we'll be transitioning from integrated qual into, uh, into flight tests. So 2017 will be extremely busy as we do uh, an uncrewed test flight, a paddleboard uh, crewed flight test, and then uh, the initial services mission in, uh, in December of 2017. And I think that's it. So we'll leave time for questions. Thank you.